It's time to get educated on the craziness impacting K-12 classrooms and college campuses around the world. Well, hello everyone and welcome. I am Katie Petrick, joined today by the man whose name should only be whispered in hushed tones, Mr. David Fierrazzo. As always, please do uh, watch put a little comment there, then share, and then, of course, you're going to repeat after that. So, you know, watch, comment, share, repeat. Thank you very much. Now, we're going to start today in the heart of the United States. It's kind of the heart, more of the mid-chest there, in Iowa, where parents are backing up the legal truck because they're deciding to sue an area school district for adopting a policy that allows any student's gender confusion to be hidden from their parents by the educators because, hey, if, you, if you're not an educator claiming to be a parent, then who are you, really? Students can create a gender support plan behind their parents' backs. This is what the group says, and it's a group in Iowa. They're suing an Iowa school district for allegedly hiding uh, children's gender transition from parents. Now, this is, by the way, this is one of the most frightening things for a lot of parents that have their kids in, in public schools around the country, that this would happen, that they would keep something from them that their kid, your kid is doing in school. So Parents Defending Education is the group, and they're suing the Linmar Community School District near Cedar Rapids over so-called gender support plans, which the group says were concealed from parents. So the lawsuit states nearly a century of Supreme Court, actually I think we have this written on a graphic there, nearly a century of Supreme Court precedent makes two things clear. Parents have a constitutional liberty interest in the care, custody, and control of their children. And students do not abandon their First Amendment rights at the schoolhouse gate. Now, this was filed last Tuesday in the U.S. District Court for the Northern District of Iowa. So, Katie, students as young as 12 can apparently work with their school to put together a gender support plan under, and we're going to get to this too and I'll let you comment on it. It's a district policy <laughs> dubbed Transgender and Students Non-Conforming to Gender Role Stereotypes. Katie, take it away. Well, that's so great that they have an actual policy stating that 504.13 are administrative regulations regarding transgender and students non-conforming to gender role <laughs> stereotypes, as you said. And <laughs> the fact that they're putting this out there, the policy states itself that any student in seventh grade or older will have priority of their support plan over their parent or guardian. Okay, just take... I'm just going to read it one more time. Any student in seventh grade or older will have priority of their support plan over their parent or guardian. So parents basically cannot be alerted about their kid's gender identity change unless that student explicitly then gives her or his or its or they or Z's or Z's their consent. Like, According to the policy, here's what it says. The district shall not disclose information that may reveal a student's transgender status to others, including, but not limited to, other students, parents, and school staff, unless legally required to do so, such as national standardized testing, which is fascinating to me. We're going to put that stuff in there. But anyway, driver's permits, transcripts, <laughs> etc., or unless the student has authorized such disclosure. So basically, these children in seventh grade and above are, are left to do whatever they want. They are free reign. They're basically adults. They get to make all these decisions. And parents, poof, poof, you're gone. You're not needed anymore. I, I think you said something very important. Did that, I? That they, well, a lot of things. Oh, just But just it. one of them, no. one of the gems, was basically they're supporting the consent of children rather than the consent of parents. Isn't that backwards from where it's supposed to be, where the parents should be the ones. These are important decisions. Well, I guess they, some wouldn't consider it as important, but every student has the right to be addressed, this is, I guess, the policy, by a name and pro pronoun that corresponds to their gender identity. This is the school's Good. gender policy. So how old are you in seventh grade? Uh, you are 12 going on 13. 12 going on 13, and you can make this decision 
And you can be in, in this plan that you are protected. And by the way, I saw something else that um, it's, it's a, it goes on the, school, the student's temporary record, mm -hmm. so not their permanent record. Can Correct. you explain that? Well, I mean, if it's temporary, then it can it can change at any any will. If it goes on their permanent record, then that's the permanent record is what the parents have access to. If you want a temporary oh, record, the parents don't have to have access to that. There's another there permanent record, it, you know. It, that's it. That's it. It won't be on the student's permanent records, and the parents apparently can't access the temporary. Is that? Yeah, and I like in the policy too how after it says, you know, that seventh grader, that any student, regardless of how they identify, can request to meet with a school administrator or a school counselor to receive support from the school and implement a gender support plan. Like, okay, here's your academic plan here to get you uh, educated and uh, graduated. Also, here's you trying to figure out your gender. Like, this shouldn't even exist, but we have a gender support plan, but wow. let's put that back up. I wanna read a little bit more here. Uh, when a student and or their parent slash guardian contacts school staff about support at school, the school will hold a meeting with the student within school 10 school days of being notified about the request for support. I'm, I'm glad that we actually have a time on this because that means this is priority. We're mm. within 10 days. Uh, how We want our kids to read and write, but we don't give it a, hey, by the end of the school year, we're like, oh, if they ever get there, hopefully fingers crossed but what they want to change gender within 10 days we will have this meeting life we will changing make it. decisions we will make it yeah um and this is the part the students should agree with who is a part of the meeting including whether their parent or guardian will participate so the kids have the have the run of the school the kids decide who gets wow. to get to do what here and by the way the policy says don't be a bully or don't be a, don't be harassing because they say, uh, the gender policy says, an intentional and or persistent refusal by staff or students to respect a student's gender identity is a violation of school board policies. And they call you either a bully, you're bullying then, or you're harassing by not respecting. I guess that would be going along with whatever the kids decide. Uh, just a little FYI before we go to break here. This school, like many schools, have been whining about the enrollment for <laughs> a little while now, and then they're putting this forward. So, hmm, I wonder what's going to happen. With all the censorship taking place on social media platforms, we've made it easy to keep up with your favorite content. Simply download the Freedom Project media app in your app store. Get access to 18 new videos a week, plus thousands of archived shows, lecture series, and educational animations. Download the Freedom Project media app on your Apple TV, Roku, tablet, or phone, and make sure you allow for notifications to keep you informed. So, so if you were uh, offended a little bit back there when I said, you know, Iowa is like the heart kind of part of the country, let's go to like one of the arms there. We're going to go to Maryland because they're getting in on this, obviously, too, where they are claiming one of their Maryland schools, they put guidelines that claim that kids have a right to keep their in-school gender identities private. So they're in school, like who they are in school, yep. and, and, then, and then when they're out of school. They yeah. can pretend to they be someone be, they they're not be, with their parents. They or, can be whatever yeah. they want. So mm. Montgomery County Public Schools guidelines for student gender identity uh, said that they get to do this. Now, just so everyone's aware, Mo Montgomery County Public Schools, they're about 45 minutes north of D.C., which is mm, telling quite a bit. You know, it's the largest school district in Maryland with 210 schools, at least according to their website. Um, and it, when I went to their website to check it out, it, it popped up a little box saying, uh, we have 247 full-time teaching positions and 60 part-time available. So if you want to go be a teacher in this school district, if what I'm, we're about to talk about here appeals to you, <laughs> you mean go for it. Wow. Now, according to the guidelines that they put forth with this whole gender identity, uh, they vow to respect the right of students to keep their gender identity or transgender status private and confidential. And that includes parents who do not affirm their child's perceived gender identity. Look at those bullet points. All these lovely things about your student's gender identity and how they're gonna support their students. And they 
so they may participate in school life consistent with their asserted gender identity, including students who identify as transgender or gender nonconforming. Oh, isn't that just lovely, David? That is. Um, how about reducing stigmatization and marginalization of transgender and gender nonconforming students? Mm. You know what's interesting about this, Katie? I know this is like, there's a lot of words and they're redefining stuff, but they put a lot of thought into these policies and what they're putting up there. This, has been, this is not something new overnight. Years have gone into this. The next one, foster social integration and cultural inclusiveness of transgender and gender non-conforming students, uh, respecting the right of students to keep their identity. This is a, another thing, keep it away from your parents, keep it confidential or private. And uh, by the way, I read something in this article. It's interesting, I seem to remember this from Roe v. Wade. And now it's coming back to the students in schools. All students have a right to privacy. There's a right, in, a constitutional right to privacy. I didn't know that was in there uh, when it comes to keeping your gender uh, to yourself or not letting your parents find out. This includes the right to keep one's tr transgender status on gender non-conforming presentation at school. So keep it at school. Well, and here's my thing. It's a constitutional it's right. It's a constitutional right of this, yeah. of course. Yeah. But when we talk about it and how they're going to, you know, we're going to do all we can according to our policy. You have a right to this privacy, you know, and we're going to abide by it and, and make it so it happens. What if I identify as an elephant? or I identify as a rhinoceros or a giraffe. Like, how are you going to accommodate me? And what, I mean, why hasn't, especially in the junior high level for these kids in high school level, why haven't they tested this yet? I, I please, I'm begging a student to be brave and test them on this. Well, they're already because cats. They're already cat, furries, I mean, cats. Furries, right? Yeah, furries, the, the, the cats are too small. What about a lion? I'm a lion. I, I, I mean, for lunch, I re require then, based on my gender identity, I require you to feed me a zebra or something. You know, as asinine as that sounds, this policy is asinine. So students, mom and dad, if you have a kid in Montgomery schools, there are 210 schools, maybe in one of them, we can have someone take it to the limits as to what they actually mean when they're gonna, you know, appease you in your gender identity because, we do have a, uh, a story coming up that uh, I think one, one, there is one brave student out there. We'll get to that next. Today's show is sponsored by our friends at MyPillow. Save up to 66% on all items at MyPillow.com when you use the code Dr. Duke. That's D-R-D-U-K-E. Support this show by supporting a great American company. All right, David, I have to ask you a very serious question. Yes. I mean, why? okay. <laughs> why, oh, why, oh, why are teachers on TikTok? Why are teachers grown bleepity bleep adults on TikTok? Why? Well, you and I might consider some of these teachers kids. I mean, sure. not to be disrespectful, but if you're 20 years old, you know, or 25, I mean, th there's a lot of young teachers that grew up with social media. They grew up in this world of, of video games and get your, your selfie out there and all, all this stuff, right? And so they think they need to put themselves out there. That's just what's acceptable. That's the thing to do. And it gets you attention, if, especially if you're a narcissist. And uh, so that's, I'm not surprised that teachers are I mean, on TikTok. I, I, I guess that's the serious real answer. I was just looking for, <laughs> they're just, sad and lonely and they <laughs> need friends because that's what it, it appears to be most of the time when I watch these TikTok videos when we have another one it's, it seems to be this is instead of getting together in teacher conferences anymore they just go on TikTok with one another and ask you know super serious questions which we're about to get to with this one but libs of TikTok as I've mentioned before and I'll mention again is a woman and maybe she's got a team around her but she all she does is curate the best slash worst of these teachers who go on TikTok and put out the videos and then libs of TikTok has gained a following. So you're able to not have to go on TikTok itself, but just go to her uh, Twitter account and you, you find all these videos. And so she found another one, a great one of a teacher being silly. Uh, 
usually the teachers are whining about their kids um, or they're always cheering with everything LGBTQI plus, plus alphabet soup land. And this time they're actually, this teacher's pretty <laughs> daft. We have a female teacher. Daft? Daft. Uh, I need to look that up. Yeah, there you go. Uh, <laughs> so this time we have a teacher who, I mean, she got a little confused at school about what her fifth and sixth grade students, specifically this one boy, was, uh, was talking about when he, he said, hey, teacher. Here's you, my pronoun. Here are my pronouns. You never <laughs> asked me my pronouns. Okay, TikTok, I really need your help here on this one. I'm a teacher. I teach fifth and sixth grade. And uh, this morning, I don't know, somehow um, the concept of pronouns came up. Um, and one of my students said, well, Miss O'Dell, did you even ask me my pronouns? And I was like, whoa. I hadn't actually asked him his pronouns and I had called him a him and I I said, oh, uh, I'm so sorry. I haven't actually called you. I mean, asked you what your pronouns are and um, what are they? And he said, I'm sorry, banana said, banana and rock. And I was like, dude, no, like don't mess around. I was, I was actually really upset because I thought he was making fun of it. And in fact, I'm still pretty sure he was making fun of it. And, uh, but they all agreed, no, like you can choose anything. Banana, rock, if you want banana and rock to be a pronoun, banana and rock's a pronoun. Is it? Is it? Is it? Did you I, notice, how do you, how did she know she wasn't offending him by calling him dude? I know, how <laughs> dare she? How dare you? How dare, <laughs> did she? Um, applaud oh, you, gosh. young sir. Banana and rock. Banana rock. Banana rock. He brought rock and, and all that. Uh, elephant, giraffe, he, banana elephant, rock. Gir all of it. This is what I'm saying. Thank you, fifth slash sixth grade boy, for standing up and saying, um, excuse me, I would like my pronouns to be taken into consideration. Too. We salute you. We salute you, <laughs> young sir, for what you have done. And, and we have another school year coming up, folks. Folks. <sighs> as uh, our president would say, folks, listen. Uh, let's, I, would, I challenge you teenagers, mom and dad are probably turning us off now, but te te teenagers, any of you out there listening, s challenge, I mean, talk to your parents, but challenge what these teachers are doing because they are so on edge and not knowing what truth is anymore that you're gonna put them right over and they're gonna just combust apparently they're all going to take to TikTok now and be questioning <laughs> each other and finally some truth will be revealed all right before we go let's take a little time to fill you in on other stories we've been following and let's start with a skyscraper fit for a king or maybe just a prince Either way, it's really big and really expensive. So Saudi Arabia has just announced plans to build a 75-mile skyscraper called the Mirror Line. The Mirror Line will consist of two 1,600-foot tall buildings that run parallel to each other and go across desert, mountains, and coastal areas. Last year, Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, 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 announced he wanted to build a structure greater than the Egyptian pyramids, and he wanted it to be completed by 2030, Agenda 2030. It's all coming together. Engineers say, say it could actually take up to 50 years, but when completed, the one trillion mega building will hold up to five million people. Katie, your thoughts on a 75 mile, I guess, high, long, um, long, lengthy. Yes. So skyscraper. when you find out that this is Saudi Arabia doing it and uh, the, the prince there is doing it, and then you remember that he's kind of in charge and the reason with the assassination of uh, Jamal Khashoggi there last couple years ago, oh, it just all makes sense. 2030? <laughs> creepy is what it is. It's creepy. It's creepy. It's like a Hollywood movie and all the directors right now are going, oh, I missed it. I could have made that story. And now this is what's happening in real life. Almost, it's, it's almost like so grand. It almost reminds me of uh, the Tower of Babel in the book mm. of Genesis in the Bible. 
anyway, more on that next time. But speaking of big bucks and cool locations, a man in West Lynn, Oregon, is swimming in cash after renting out two or renting out his backyard for the past two years. So ten years ago, Jim Batan spent over $100,000 adding a pool to his property. Two years ago, he began renting it out on a platform called Swimply, which dubs itself the Airbnb of swimming pools. Jim says the rate runs $70 per, per hour for five people and rises with additional swimmers. During the summer, the pool is booked for roughly 26 visits per week. In the last two years, Jim has hosted roughly 9,000 swimmers, and he's made a whopping $177,000. Katie, your thoughts on having, a th well, thousands of strangers use your pool in your own backyard. I hope some of that $177,000 goes to making sure the chlorine is is working well Oof. in that little pool because that's gross but how did i miss this i grew up out in the countryside and we had a little natural spring pond full of algae and frogs and everything that people i i mean i'd charge you five dollars to just swim in that could have made five dollars probably <laughs> one person would have done it all right fine let's wrap things up with everyone's favorite satire site this is fun We've picked our favorite Babylon Bee headlines to see which one should be crowned numero uno. And let's start with Biden. We are in a pandemic of the quadruple vaccinated. <laughs> Next, Sodom and Gomorrah declare a state of emergency over monkeypox. <laughs> Next, man taken up into heaven after stopping gas pump exactly on the .00. Next, Pelosi arrested for running the country, well, under the influence. And finally, Democrats propose $800 billion if you don't vote for this, you hate puppies spending bill. So, Katie, I know there are a couple, two or three mm, yeah. that are like running neck and neck. What this, do you think? This, What's your top this pick? Is, this is a tough week. Be Another, okay, first well, off, though, the Nancy Pelosi one what, shouldn't even be Babylon B. That should just be a headline. Like, that just is a headline. For running the I mean, country. The, the, well, she does Pelosi that. Pelosi runs country while under the influence. I mean, it's... It, Look it, at her a, face there. She wasn't arrested. <laughs> that's the thing. That's, that's just... That's not even... That's oh, just her. That, yeah. is, that is the Nancy. There's some truth to um, that. Anyway, is, so ooh, tough call this week. Let's get your answer first because I want to see what you pick. Um, go back to the first one, Mike. I think I like the, either the first or the second one. Um, I, I like that because you know what? The, the guy got COVID. He was quadruple vaccinated or boosted. He got all the things. He's Who telling, knows? all right, let's have know. perpetual masks and boosters and social distancing and let's, let's have more lockdowns and we'll still get COVID, but let's just keep doing this. I think it's the uh, definition of an insanity, doing the same things over and over <laughs> and expecting different results. So your pick? What does Homer Simpson say? Crazy? Don't mind if I do. Um, I think I might go though with the monkey pox. Um, Sodom and Gomorrah. I, I had a little bit of an actual like <clears throat> reaction when I read, when you just read Sodom and Gomorrah declare a state of emergency over monkeypox. That's because funny. If, oh man, that's see. This is why <laughs> it is though. It is why they are so good at like Kyle Mann and the team. Like why they are so good at what they do yeah. because they they get you with the truth in there and yeah. you're like oh. Yeah. Burn. And there are a few watch viewers that are going, well, I don't get it. Monkey pox, Sodom and Gomorrah. I, that, you look it up. Look it anyway, up, get it. that's going to wrap it up for this segment. More to come next time. Well, uh, I have to say, uh, this was a, a mighty fine episode. Fine. I mean, I mean what, what say you, Mr. Fiorazzo? I think it was better than fine. Ooh, I think it was better than fine. Yes. Well, anyways, <laughs> after that fine performance, for all of us here at Freedom Project, please stay educated, my peeps. Peeps?